people risk their lives to come here to America to do whatever they want. Right, 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 right. Yes. Right. All have a choice. Yes. You can choose. You can do. You can follow the path of the if you choose, or you can follow the path of goodness if you choose. But the choice is still within the price, no matter where you get. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for our sins, the payment for us breaking God's commandments, is death. Yes. What is death? Okay. Okay. So death. I've been. Yes. There's there's a second there's a second death. The testimonies of this Bible prophesy of America's destruction. How? By way of thermonuclear fire. That's right. You think all of those rumors of wars are just rumors? No. That's Bible prophecy coming to pass. That's right. It's not going to get any better. Right. So what does the Bible say? Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. Right. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So the Bible is saying, come out of her, my people. He's addressing a particular group of people, and he's saying for those people to come out of her. Read on. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye, you people, be not partakers, meaning join together with her sins. Do you know what sin is? That's not a bad answer, but let's see what the Bible says, because that's how we get the, the true understanding. The Bible says, precept must be upon precept. So, right there it says, sin. But if we don't know what sin is, there's another precept to explain that word. Read. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committeth sin. So now it's addressing that word, whosoever commits sin, read. Transgresses also the law. Transgress means to break the law. Read on. For sin because is, sin is what? It's the transgression of the law. So sin is when we break God's law. So now let's go back to Revelation 18, verse 4. Read this it is again. the book of Revelation, chapter 18, and verse 4. Right. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, uh -huh. Come out of her, my people. So now God is saying what? God is addressing the Israelites. My people are the Israelites. You blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. So God says, come out of her, my people. Read on. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Who is the her? That's talking about Babylon the Great. That's America. Right. America in the Bible, my brother, is Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. Why? Because America pushes all manner of sin. That's right. Think about it. Wake Think about up. it, bro. This is the country that everyone comes to. Why? Because they automatically know, I could do whatever I want. Look it up. People risk their lives to come here to America to do whatever they want. Right, 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 right. Yes. Right. We all have a choice. Yes. You can choose. You can, do, you can follow the path of the thing if you choose, or you can follow the path of goodness if you choose. First no Corinthians 15:33. I want to read something to you. You're absolutely right. We all do have that choice, and the Bible talks about that. Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, wrote to the Israelites, and he said, "I set before you this day life, which is keeping God's commandments, and death. Choose you this day which one you're going to serve." So yes, from the beginning, we always had that choice, but because of what was around us, even back during those times with Moses, because of the influence of the other nations, we chose to follow them. It's no different today. Why? Because here in America, we were what? We were slaves. Exactly. I get that. I get that. But you still, once you come to life today, you know what you hear and what you still choose. But why would you choose death? And if at that point, Think about, think about what you just said. That's a really good point. But think about it. If now you're learning which one is life and which one is death, why, why is it then that a lot of our people still choose death? Why is that? 
because a lot of our people, I'm going to tell you straight, a lot of our people are, it's called, they're, they're seared in their minds. And we're going to read that. Read what you got. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. This is why our people are seared in their brains. Read. Be not deceived. Don't be fooled. Read. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So now the Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You have children? H how old is your youngest? Okay, my youngest just turned one. I have several children, right? But now, as me now knowing, like you said, the difference between life and death, I have that choice to say, yo, I don't want my children to be corrupted, right? That's my choice. That's my decision as the father, as the head of the house. I don't want my children to be corrupted. The Bible just said, evil communications corrupt good manners. So now if I'm not teaching them anything at all, and I just sit them down in front of the television, whatever's on television is going to corrupt their minds. And exactly. That's what happens to our people. Because when you go to school, we're not learning about our true history. We're not being taught that we're the Israelites. We're not being taught... That Christ is a black man from the tribe of Judah. He's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Bring it out! We're not being taught that. We're not being taught that there's color in the Bible, that the, that the Bible was written by Israelites, who are today so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. We're not taught that as a people. So now we go throughout our entire lives from that young age, oh, well, I guess I'm just black, or I guess I'm just Jamaican, or West Indian, or, or Haitian. So those are, those are bywords that were put on us by our slave master, by the white man. So now us coming back to the Bible, coming back to this true understanding, it's imperative for us to teach our people. So yes, of course, you do have that choice, but why would you choose death? Think about it. The wages of sin, the Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. A lot of our people walk around with that mindset of, oh, I guess I'm good. I could do whatever I want. For now, read on. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. Listen to the Bible. Read. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for our sins, the payment for us breaking God's commandments is death. That's right. A lot of our people don't understand that. Do you know what some of those laws are that we break on the daily? Yes. What is death? Okay. Okay. So death. I've been... Yes. There's, there's a second there's a second death. Why? Because the judgment to death of our flesh, that's the judgment for all flesh. Everyone's going to die and go into the ground. But everyone has to answer before God. Let's get that in Revelation 20. You know what I want? Because the Bible says that the books were open. There, there are angels. Everyone is, everyone is assigned it. You know what? Before you get this, go to Matthew 18, verse 10. Yes. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10. Uh -huh. no! Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Right. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels uh -huh. do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So the there in that verse is T-H-E-I-R, meaning it's possessive, right? Meaning what? Everyone. You know, I remember when we were children, right? And you would watch the cartoon and you would see an angel on this shoulder and an angel on that shoulder. What this verse is saying is that everyone is allotted an angel to follow them throughout their entire lives. And what does that angel do? It records all the good that you did and all the bad. Bring it out. So now, after we die, it's not just death. And you don't just go to sleep and wake up in heaven. No. You got to answer the God for everything that you did wrong. That's why we're teaching repentance. So now, Revelation 20. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 11. Uh -huh. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth of the heaven fled away. So there was a great white throne in heaven, and him that sat on it, the, the, the face of the earth fled away. They were afraid because they knew that God was on the scene, ready to bring forth judgment. Read. And there was found no place for them. There was found no place to hide. There's no hiding when it's judgment day. Read. Read. And I saw the dead, great and small and great. You, whoa, whoa. What did John say? Who did he see? And I saw the dead. John said, John the Revelator, yes, John the Revelator saw the dead, 
small and great. Everyone that had passed away that was buried, that thought that everything was all good, John saw them be risen back up for a purpose. Read. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. John saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. They had to wake up and stand before God. Why? Read. And the books were opened. And the books were opened. Yes. Everything is documented. The books were opened. The books on their lives were open. So the good, the bad, and the Bible to weigh the two. Read. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's the Bible. The Bible is the book of life. So those two books, good, bad, then they have to be weighed against the book of life. Right. Read on. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the dead were judged according to their works. This is why we teach repentance. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. is you.